Wave them at them bitches hating on you with their friends, girl, you got it. You are now tuned into Let's Talk Podcast, where we talk less and do more. Today, we have a very special guest for the third time. Ooh, I'm a repeat. PRP. Jen actually told me, like, you should be, like, a co-host on some episodes. I you said, think so? We talk. Our conversations are always just so good. Yeah, I mean, but I, I don't know. I don't want that. I mean, yeah, I could see that. But we just be talking. Yeah, but that's why it just be like. It's always fire. So, today's episode is very different. This Usually, my episodes are strategically planned, written out. I have questions. I have icebreak. I have everything together. But today's episode was really like on the fly. Um, as you know, my the first studio I was recording in is under construction. I think something is just not up and running right now. So last minute I came to her social room and she literally got me together in three minutes. So we are here today. How do you like it? Mm -hmm. I love it in here. It's so pretty. It you, is actually like, it feels cozy. You do content, so you know like, yeah, like what you want out of a content space. So I know this is conveyed the right way. So yes, I am uh, shooting my episode here today. I will be, I am interested in shooting more episodes here. It's really, really nice. The aesthetic is everything that you would need to do. Pictures, uh, content, TikToks, Instagram reels, girls night party. It's just, it's like a one-stop shop. I love it. It's pink, it's neutral, it's gold, it's green. Everything is just perfect in here. Yeah, you know, like when I like, I'm an Aquarius. When I like something, I like, I hold on tight. That's what food, that's what everything. If I like a meal, like I went to floods, and I've been at floods almost every day since. Oh, you what? The same thing, a seafood platter with my Oh, okay, drink. I can see that. Yeah, so. Okay, so let's get into it. We do have wine. Okay. We can drink the wine. <laughs> I'm so awkward. But um, this episode will mainly be about something that I always shied away from. I never like talking about trendy topics, but I feel like double, double standards should be discussed. Um, the men in our generation, the dating pool is toilet water. I feel like that's how I feel. I feel and like I'm happy you're here because you're oh, you're younger than me. So we have two different views on. I'm so honored. Yeah, we have two I different views so on you know relationships. What are you doing? I'm um, going to Chicago. That's gonna be fun. My daughter just went to Chicago. But Sunday, I'm gonna. I'm trying to go out, but I don't know. It's pretty much everything so hard. Yes, with the relationships, double standards, uh, all of those things. How do you feel? Icebreaker question. Pause. Okay. Icebreaker question. You meet a man. He's he crosses all. He checks off all boxes. Everything you want in a man, you meet him. You feel like. He's like a 95 out of 100. Y'all having a good time. Y'all vibing, you know. Mm -hmm. He's not being like extra touchy. He's perfect. Okay. But he says that, that question that I feel like men that ask this question are retarded. What's the what do you bring to the table? Yeah, because you what saw you what say? I was bringing. That's why you came and sat here What with would you me. say? If a man, if he just randomly asks, you thought he was perfect, and he asks, what do you bring to the table? What would your response be? Um, It's tricky. It really depends on, like, the vibe I was already getting. Because, again, like, if I'm just questioning it, like, that's random. Like, where did that come from? I'm probably going to be combative a little bit, like, or defensive, I should say. Like, you know, where did that come from? Like, like a mad really, black like a yeah. mad black woman, like they call us. Basically, like, you knew what was, you knew what I was bringing. You knew my potential, all of that. Like, that's why you came to the table, like mm -hmm. I said. But... Then sometimes it's okay. Like if it's, it really depends on how it's presented to me because it's like I can say what I bring to the table. This is why, this is why I have you because you're younger and then it's me. So you're never the very seasoned, like, the very seasoned person. One time a man asked me that, and I actually literally wrote out like how I like this is what I bring to the table. This, 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 mm -hmm. this, 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 and then after I said that, I wanted to throw up. It okay. So yeah, that's cringy. I, get I wanted it. to throw up because it's like. Is this an audition? Am I auditioning to get your time? Like, I don't have, I feel like if we like each other and we vibe or whatever the case may be, I don't have to tell you what I bring to the table. You're going yeah. to see it. That's, and yeah. any man that's mentally, physically, financially, emotionally able to take care of a woman 
it's not asking her what she brings to the table. That's what I feel like. I feel yeah. like some stuff go without being said. I think that all goes back to like. So I would never ever answer that question. Yeah. I would I, say, what do you bring to the table? So then would you want him to tell you? And he's going to tell me and I'm going to say, what did I bring to the table right now? Where at the table? What do I have? That is a good question because then that's what I'm saying. Like, is there, you don't see it? Because then that's a different conversation. We don't need to be. I feel like men want, us to, men want us to audition for a spot in their life. And it's just like, your table seat three and you missing four legs on it. Like. I'm not <laughs> I'm not bringing anything to your table that's that's hanging on by a thread. Yeah. And I just that goes into other things that I always say I'm never going to talk about, but we we're going to talk about it today. 50-50 relationships, what do you bring to the table? Double standards, guys that want to have that want to be in poly relationships but don't want to take care of each household. Um I try not to bash men. I that, I love a black man. I want a black man, a black strong man. Yeah, I want a black man. Black I want, kids, but black yeah, family. I want that. I want that, and I'm going to have that. But I feel like we are so um, bullied into feeling like if a man is helping us or if a man is doing for us, then mm-hmm. just take it because they're not doing for everybody, and it's just like, but they are. 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 And yeah. I hate when I meet a man. And this isn't my own problem. And this is how I view myself. Why do I always have to get so deep? This You're is not- this goes into how I view myself before because it's like I hate when I meet a man and if he I'm so transparent on social media. So I meet a man and he's like, uh, you such a strong woman. You go to work. You don't be asking for nothing. You don't be and that's so that's the immediate turn off because I am off. like that by force because look at the material. Yeah. How am I asking you for help and you barely helping yourself? But that's my problem. And I've made that my identity to be this strong woman that don't need a man for nothing. And now when I when a man meet me, that's the vibe I give off. Like, oh, I'm strong. I don't need a man for nothing. But then I'm mad because a man feel like since I don't need him for anything, he's not really doing much. Or he's doing the bare minimum. And a lot of men do the bare minimum and they look at it as their king tut or they're just doing big things and it's like I don't want to bring you down to reality and tell you what you're doing is not mm-hmm. even 20 percent of what the last person is doing because that's messy and that's tacky mm-hmm. and then you meet a man and he tell you oh I did this and this and this and this and this for her and, and it's just like I don't care yeah I got this I got that I don't care what you have are you investing into me men take care of what they love period you can tell me you love me a trillion times you can buy me a million roses are you investing into my future Mm -hmm. are you investing into my business are you giving me time a man's going to give you money especially a man who who money is just coming and coming and coming and that's like another thing about older women me being the older woman is crazy and then a younger girl because like i talk to my little sister sometimes or they see me interact with people and they see something that somebody is doing they be like like oh my god like he doing this 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 and i'm like Okay. Yeah. Like it's regular. He should be doing it. Right. This is what, and he don't have to do it. But let's be realistic. A guy know what he should be doing for a woman. Yeah. Like a woman know what she shouldn't and should be doing in regards to being with a man, and that's where mm-hmm. double standards come in because we can't not want double standards when it's convenient, but at the same time, it's like it's so hard. It's so hard. Because we want a man to take, we want a man to come in and take care of us, do this, do this, and do this. But we don't want him to ask us what we bring to the table. And then we feel like we should be doing something, but we shouldn't be doing what they want us to do because they want us to do it. We should be doing what we want to do, but we still want a man to take care of us hand and foot. So it just goes like I've been over here trying to find a way to justify everything. For it like just the goes like it just, but it's hard. I mean, I don't know our whole dating situation right now. I don't know what it is like. We like want to date each other, but we want to like be at each other too. Like each side wants the other side to be so perfect, mm-hmm. but we don't even know what that is. We don't know what it is, but at the same time, I'm a person that I go based off of how you make me feel. Yeah. So I made me. Let's. Do, I, I. I'm. I'm. I'm currently. I was currently dating someone a little older than me, a lot older than me. But so it's he feel like he feel like. You talking to him, and he ain't bought this, 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 this. Okay, you're buying me all these things, but when I was with him, 
this is about to get me in a lot of a heap of mess. But men think that money justifies everything. So you would have Tyrone. Tyrone got the money. He giving you the money. He buying you this. He doing this. He doing that. But Tyrone don't really have time. Tyrone not really able to talk to you about what you want to do in the next mm-hmm. five years. But he'll give you some money to go get eat and drink with your homegirls. And he'll show fine, you a good time and y'all go out. Enough. And then you talking to Jeff. Jeff work at Chrysler, work at Ford. And Jeff get paid, you know, every week. I think they get paid every week or whatever. And he's not able to do something with you every weekend. But every other weekend, he have committed to taking you on a date. Or he buy you flowers every mm-hmm. week. Or he do things like that. Y'all can sit and talk about y'all dreams. You tell Tyrone you want to open up a CPR space. And he like, okay, how much it costs? You tell, what was the other name? Joe? Yeah. You tell Joe you want to open up a CNA. You want to open up a uh, oh CPR. Boy, you tell Joe you want to open up a CPR, a CPR training thing. He like, okay, so what licenses do you need? Um, what else are you going to do if the CPR is slowing down? What, what? Mm. He's asking questions. And it's just like. He's interesting. Most women in our generation, they're going for Tyrone because they want the image. They want to look a certain way. I'm always going for Joe. I was going to say, I don't. Tyrone's going to irritate me. I'm always going for Joe. And yes, if I was a girl that always went for the Tyrones, I probably could be uh, in a better situation, living a more lavish mm-hmm. life or stuff like that. But those things are not important to me. Money makes the world go around. Money does buy happiness, you know, because if you had it, you don't have to worry about certain things. But at the same time, I want to be with a man based off of love. Yeah. I don't want a man to meet me and I don't really like him. But he's so nice and he's doing stuff, so I start liking him. No. And then when I start liking him, he kind of threw off because it took so long. Now he doing stuff for Keisha and I'm just there. Now I like you and you like, okay, your season was last, last season. It's a new season. It's a new girl. So it's just... Our our double standards, our date, and everything is just, it's a glitch. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I was just having this conversation, I guess, with someone that, I guess, I don't know. We Yeah, I don't know what's going on. But Is it a guy? It's a guy, but, like, I don't know what we're doing. I don't know what's That's, going on. Like, it's my first day out. That's just how I feel every day. Like, it's my first day out. But I was just explaining that, like, you know, the outings and all of that is fine. Even, like, communicating daily. But I'm the type of person, I need to you I need to touch you I need to and you know if you can't unfortunately I feel like look first of all loving somebody wanting somebody is a choice Mm -hmm. so it's like it should never I should never come off like if I need to be squeezed in or something like that I should never come off like a burden or anything like this is your choice to want me this is your choice to you know get to know me want to love me so did you explain that to him yes and this is another this is something else that differentiates younger girls from older women because like how you explain that to him I feel like at your big you don't have to say nothing at your big grown age I'm not I'm not teaching you how to love a woman that was your mama job so here's, okay, here's another thing. I've known this man for a very long time, and mm-hmm. we've done this cycle for a very long time, and which is the first problem. you learn people. You learn right? people because if you're interested in me, and look at me. Don't take relationship advice from someone that's single. Oh, I know. You know. But when you learn, if you, if. Yeah. I'm Chris, mm-hmm. and I'm interested in you. Mm-hmm. I'm dating you. I'm getting to know you. I'm texting you. I'm asking you questions I want to know. I'm getting to know who you are. I'm getting to know what you like what you don't like, X, Y, Z, because I'm interested in you. Mm -hmm. See, I could like this plant. Just because I like it don't mean I'm going to water it. (laughs) Like, come on, man. But I'm interested in you, (laughs) so I'm putting effort into getting to know you. So it's certain things that I should pick up by being around you, by talking to you, by knowing you. Just because I like, just because somebody like you don't mean they're interested in you. And I Mm. feel like a lot of times uh, a man feel like, oh, I like you. And you're like, okay, I like you too. Mm-hmm. Let's run and away off into sunset. No, that don't no. Be enough. And that was my thing. Like, this time, like, I explained that. And I'm like, wait a minute. Why am I still explaining this? I'm not explaining this no more. So then it turned into like, where you been at? I ain't heard from you. I ain't, what, where have I been at? Why haven't you heard from me? Like, what am I doing here? We kind of just taking up space. I could be texting anything. I could watch a Netflix movie. I don't have to sit here and text you. Like. Something that I learned, uh, a, a, a man actually said this last night. That's crazy. A man said this. He said his mom taught him to like who like him. Mm-hmm. And I feel like 
my auntie used to always tell me that. Like, you got to like who like you. You might like him or you have to like who's interested in you. Like, mm -hmm. I like you, you like me. What does that mean? Because I could like you, but I'm putting my interest into something else. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So just because a man like me, that, that holds no weight. Mm -mm. You liking me holds no weight. What are you doing to show me that you're interested in me? What effort are you doing? And I feel like uh, when we meet men, especially, uh, we like men like a chase, whether they admit to it or not. Yeah. And a, a man, another man has told me this too. Like girls are so pushy and assertive, like they don't really like that. They want to they yeah. feel like, you know, they want you a little bit more. They want to chase you. That's just something that a man told me. And I noticed that in our relationship, when he was like a little chase, mm -hmm. like, you know, I like you. You know, I'm interested in you. You know, we vibe. But every time you call, I'm not running. Mm -hmm. That he was more interested. Right. But if every two seconds what you're doing, nothing. Can you come here? Yeah. Like, they don't. It just, it, it's like their nature to just run away from the things that are chasing them and mm -hmm. then chase them. I feel like it's everybody. It's all of our things. It's always a guy doing everything we want. Yeah, and then I'm like, okay, I don't know. And we like, oh, not you. We want him to do it. The guy that's running. It's like a cat and mouse. It's yeah. just it's cat and mouse. And it's me, the hopeless romantic the hopeless romantic that always feels like I'm going to it's a fairy tale and it is, but I just know that the person that's for me, I'm not gonna have to chase. Yeah. I'm not gonna have to chase you. And people say I'm crazy, and that's another thing I want to talk about. How do you feel about well, you're still young. How old are you? I'm 27. 27. I mm -hmm. thought you, I started you was 24, 25. Really? But how do you feel about people saying, like, because I'm 33, like, I mean, at this point, you just got to settle for something. Like, if, no, you, got, I'm not. if you got non negotiables, mm -mm. maybe you need to check off of like lesser boxes mm -hmm. because, like, mm -mm. It's, it's time for you to have somebody. I'm just never going to nope. settle. You know, I actually have like family that'll be like, here, you're not getting any younger, blah, blah. And mm -hmm. I just be like, and that's just too, because I'm just getting finer. Like, I'm not about to, no, I'm not about to settle. I be thinking about stuff like that because for some reason, that's like my biggest thing. I'll meet a guy, and like you said, the boxes be checking off, but it'd be one thing that don't check off. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I need all of my boxes yeah, to check off. Yeah, I need all off. my boxes checked. Because then what happens is, because I've tried it before, tested it out, okay, that one box don't check off, maybe it'll check off eventually. Or Never. maybe it's not that important. No, because I'm always thinking about how that box don't check mm -hmm. off. Like, oh, something is always just not right. And now and I we don't always, like you at all. We, we, we go into it where we go into, like, liking or dating somebody with well, who we who we see them being. Like, he's like this, but I think in a little more time, he'll be like this. Yeah. And he'll be like, he not. I'm, but I will say, like, with that whole box, box is not checking off, it's taught me something that I, like, never used to do before until, like, this year for real. And that's, like, bowing out gracefully or, like, maturely leaving situations like mm -hmm. before i would just oh i got ghosted leave it alone or i'm ghosting leave it alone no i'm like really taking the time to be like hey it's just not working boom, out boom, i love, boom, that. Boom. I love but that because now i don't know what it is it's like a rush i can mm -hmm. do it all the time now i kind of be waiting to do it like oh this ain't working i can't wait to tell you we're not doing this no more like <laughs> and i'm telling you exactly why so you know yeah, so you're not confused me. you know this is not working because i told you more than once that i want this 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 and this and you chose to not do it yes so that is telling me you don't you don't care like you don't care so I'm just not interested in being with somebody that, that's not caring about my feelings right now. And I also tell guys, this 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 is like a little secret right here. Your feelings are valid. <laughs> Your feelings are valid. If you feel, Same. if you feel, because this is what men are doing. You going to them with a problem and they're flipping it on you. Yeah. And we be so ready to argue. Let's, now they like, see what I mean? Mm -hmm. You crazy. No. Your feelings are valid. If you feel like whatever... Oh, you just want to go back to your ex. Your feelings are valid. Mm -hmm. That's not the truth, but I'm not going to discredit your feelings. I'm sorry that I made you feel that way. That is not the truth. However, this isn't working for me. I'm not arguing with nobody No. every day. I have a four-year-old. Mm -mm. I feel like if we're dating, we're getting to know each other, we're supposed to... It's not always supposed to just be fun, 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 but what are we arguing for? Where is the disconnection? I don't like when every time... Cause I actually just had a conversation like that too. And like when I go to talk to you or it's a conversation that is geared more so towards you, it's not an attack. It's not an argument. Oh, it's no. just me trying to communicate with you. And I feel like not only is it toxic, but that's a little narcissism for you mm -hmm. to just try to flip that and automatically think because somebody is talking to you about you, it's an argument. And it's like, no, you can't pick up my tone on text or anything like that. So then at that point, that's when we need to be an adult. Like, well, we need to sit down and talk. Why Why is that never an option? 
I, I'm at a point in my life, I'm always at a point, every episode I'm at a point, I'm at a point in my life where my number one non-negotiable is you being, you not being self-aware. You being dumb. I'd rather you do something and be like, damn, Shell, damn, Shell, I know I shouldn't have did that, but in the moment, X, Y, Z, yeah. then for you to say, well, I did it because you... You have one time, and I'm so stern, and it's just like, why am I like this? But I, I have to be. You lack accountability. I just told somebody, you lack accountability. You have no self-awareness, and at your very big, big, big age, you're supposed to be setting an example for your children. <laughs> like, what? And then people want to, they act so like, oh, like, what, what, are, what do you mean? Yeah. We are too grown for you not to know right from wrong. That's like when my daughter do something, and before I even know she did it, she's flinching. Because you know you're wrong. She's more self-aware than you. Mm -hmm. I can't be with nobody else. I'd rather you, we talk about it, and I choose to deal with it, or I choose to let it go. But to be in a situation, and you keep, every time you do something that you know you shouldn't do, you, you project that energy onto me like, well, I did this because you did this. How old are we? Right. Like your mom used to say, if, she, if I jump off a bridge, you going to... You going to do it? I don't know. It's kind of... I feel like it's like a competition of who wants the other the most. Like, show me, show me, show me, show me. But mm -mm. I feel like after so long of like knowing a person, getting to know a person, vibing with a person, how much more do they need to show you? I feel like you know off the first link where you going with that person. Yeah. Like, I know it's Sunday, but you know how they say you know if you're going to be sexually involved with somebody when you first meet them yeah like i know if i'm be, i know off the first link like i feel like we really move a lot on convenience and not yeah. just men i feel like because women do it too because it's like i would i was into it with a guy that i was dating mm -hmm. or whatever so this this wasn't recently this was this is a long time ago this old tea this old tea I was into it with a guy I was dating or whatever, and I knew it was this other guy, and I know if I call him, he Johnny on the spot. Let's go hang out. Okay, mm -hmm. let's go hang out. And it kind of backfired because it's like, okay, let's hang out. We go, we hang out. We, you know, we go on a date. We cool or whatever. Okay, I got that out of my system. The next morning, good morning, good morning, baby. I enjoyed our time last night. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. I want to see you tonight too. No. And then that's me. That's my fault because I'm just doing anything because it's convenient. Mm -hmm. And we always talk about men only want to do stuff when it's convenient. They only want to see when it's convenient. But we turn around and we do the same thing. I do it sometimes. I text I text somebody that I know going to respond like, I miss you. Mm -hmm. I miss you too. And I'll be like, why did I just do that? Now they keep texting me and I had no intention of talking to this person. Yeah, but I'm bored. Did recently did what? I had text somebody. Remember, cra crazy man. Yeah, I don't know. I blamed it on being drunk, but you should never blame nothing on being drunk because mm -hmm. I knew what I was doing. I even played it off so bad. I was like, "Oh my god, why is he texting me?" My best friend, like, you text him. Why is he unblocked? I was like, "I know. I just really wanted us to act like we did not know what happened." No, and well, that's. But that was me lacking it's my own all, accountability. Yeah, lacking accountability. It's not all men. It's not always. Because I knew he was going to respond. I knew he was going to You knew he was going to answer. He was FaceTiming me all night. I'm you, like. And you like, huh. Nah, I'm mad. I'm like, whole like time, the, the whole time, you were bored and you reached out to him because it was convenient. Yep. We do the same thing that men do. That's why the whole double standard thing is coming into play because I feel like with the double standards, is some things that, okay, women should be able to do this and then men shouldn't be able to do that. But then we like, we all want to be treated fair. So it's just. Mm -hmm. Just, I feel like at this point, you just do what makes you happy. But if making you happy is the cost of making someone else miserable, mm -hmm. it's not fair. And that's just how I personally feel. Another thing, and I don't know, this might be like off topic, but I feel like people need to be real about the capacity that they can handle when it comes to dating. Mm -hmm. Like, people be like, oh, I want to date, I want to date. And Unfortunately, because the way our generation is, it's different layers to that too now. Like, do you want to date and you just want to have somebody to go out and do stuff with? Or do you want to date and you actually want to get to know somebody? You want to uh, eventually start coming around family? Like, what is it that you want to do? Because you could just say you want to date me and now we dating, but you're not giving me 
certain aspect because of what I not, thought Because you have to ask first, are you dating, just dating around, yes, just having in, fun, dating socially? Mm-hmm. Or are you dating to be in a relationship? Because a lot of times, women, we automatically think that we're dating somebody and mm-hmm. we're dating towards being in a relationship the whole time. This man is literally only dating socially. Yeah, He has no point, he has no intention of being in a relationship. He might be a guy that work all the time, so he go on dates to decompress. Yes. And he's just going to keep on doing that. And the whole time, we like, okay. It's our third date. On the fourth date, I'm going to invite him over. And on the fifth date, I'm going to cook for him. And then the whole time, he like, we about to go, I'm about to go out to eat with this girl. We always be going out to eat. Yeah, literally. And that's it. He, he thinks nothing else of it. So I feel like that's another thing that I, I recently started doing. Is yeah. Let's put I'm intentionally dating. I'm 33. I mm-hmm. have a four-year-old. I'm dating to be in a relationship. I would like to be married. I may want more children. Mm-hmm. And then... If you know you're 55, you know I'm not dating you for those reasons. Yeah. I may be dating, you know, I got a couple days free. I'm just just dating. I'm just hanging. We just hanging yeah. out. But I'm not going to act like I'm about to be in a relationship with you. I'm not inviting you to my house. I'm not cooking for you. I'm not doing none of those things that you think this is anything more than us casually dating. Yeah. And that's just me. I'm just trying to do everything. I'm trying to be a lot more intentional than I've been recently. Yeah, I'm really trying to, like, I don't know, like, I, I don't want to say speak up for myself, but that's really what it is. Like, speak up for myself. Like, because I'm just so used to going with the flow or seeing this or where did I mess up here? And it's like, mm-hmm. it's never too late to start over. You can, communicate. Never, you can start over every You can morning. communicate that you not feeling this no more any day. It is okay. And it was like, a situation I was in. I was talking to a man and he had a situation. He was in a relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, they always be like, oh, but I want to be with you. I'm not happy. Whatever. When you I was younger, when I was, <laughs> when I was, when I was, when I was younger. I'm like, well, you know, young and vulnerable. Like, well, she's boring. That's why he with me because I'm fun. Yeah. And, da, 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 da. and it's like, if I go back, that was probably 10 years ago. If I go back, they're still with that woman. Yeah. They're still with that woman. And the number one thing guys used to say when I was younger, and I used to be like, I don't care. You either single or you married. They used to say, well, you know, I have somebody. All of a sudden, you don't want to be. Yes, all of a sudden I'm growing up, I'm maturing. I don't want to be I don't do that. a woman on the side. I don't want to talk to a man who talk who have a woman in a situation and he's so miserable, so we're hanging out all day, but he's going to sleep with his girlfriend at night. I don't want to be in a situation like that anymore. I had something like that. It was a guy, he was, um, it didn't get too deep, thank God, but he was married and he used to like complain about little stuff with his wife. And I just used to tell him, like, well, can you go talk to her about it? Or can you, like, I, I'm not feeling this. Like, and I shouldn't even be talking to you. To and I always feel there. like now, I feel like when I was younger, I didn't used to care. I'm like, I'm young. Yeah. You know, whatever. But now I feel like <laughs> I found out something. When take, I get take a man, when I get a man, like, when I was in a relationship and he was, like, doing whatever it is he was doing, I'm like, it's karma. There's I'm like, too. it's karma. And I was just telling somebody, I'm like, when I get a man, he's going to do me in. And he's like, no, you shouldn't think like that. I'm like, no, because when I was younger, I didn't care. And now I'm at a point where if you talk, tell me you got somebody, I, it's, we have no. Yeah, no. Mm-mm. Like, I'm not interested. I'm not interested in. I, I got my karma. I know. I'm not interested in being, in, I'm not interested in being with somebody that's with somebody else because I'm a woman first. Yep. I'm a woman first. So what you I'm supposed to see your phone picture. ringing and I'm over there like. Like, no, I'm a woman first. I know that pain. I know how it feels mm-hmm. to be with a man. A man is telling me he loved me. And he's and doing do, all, and he's do doing all no of these things. And he's doing miserable. all these things. And then I'm at home late. And I just know he with somebody else. Yeah. No. But me, I'm not blowing your phone up. Because y'all ain't about to be sitting there laughing at me. No, yeah. But <laughs> but I've been there when somebody's phone is just ringing. And they're like, what he want? Anytime a nigga say, anytime a man say, damn, what he want? Let's see. Mm-hmm. Answer. I want to know what he want to. He called 55 times. <laughs> like, it has to be an emergency, so you should answer. And that's just, I just, some days I think I'm like, I'm giving up hope. Like, a lot of, uh, this one man told me, like, if you don't have your first, everybody got somebody. Mm-hmm. Like, anybody you meet, they're going to have somebody. And I said, well, that's just not the person for me. Yeah, no. I don't think that's true either. Like, the Polly thing. It was a guy, he had two girlfriends. And he wanted me to, like, you know, he wanted to date me, too. Yada, yada, yada. He wanted you to be the third girlfriend. So his thing was he wanted me to be on the outside. Like, he's like, do you want to be, like, in our thing, or do you want me and you to just date? Either way, you still have two other girlfriends. So. <laughs> so. That's all fun. 
<laughs> talking to him more because you know me, you know me. I I just yeah, I need that. Um, I need I need I I be feeling mm -mm. like I need to have a TV show because I need que I got questions I need answers.